Colorism in social media can be seen as merely a reflection of what goes on in the world at large. However, the very nature of social media has actually transformed the ways in which we experience colorism in modern society. Throughout history, colorism has always been perpetuated in large part through various forms of media, from ancient stories and texts that equated dark with evil and light with good, to prejudicial casting in Hollywood films. But social media has a few characteristics that make it unique from other older forms of media. Social media, for example, allows people to be more anonymous or create personas, therefore allowing them to say things that they might have otherwise not said. It allows people to organize around common interests and easily connect with like-minded people from around the world. It creates a false sense of importance that prompts us to publicize all of our thoughts as if each one is breaking news, being fed to an eager audience of adoring fans or concerned citizens. It keeps a record of what we say, tracks our online behavior and informs us of what's trending in certain areas. It is searchable, making it easy to find people and what they've say said in the past on any given topic. It is so far the most democratic form of media we've ever had, a form, a form where practically anyone can be seen and heard. And it makes the world ever smaller by giving us equal access to more people than ever before and by facilitating connections across societal and geographic borders. These aspects of social media impact our experience of colorism in three basic ways. One, increased conversation. Two, greater alliances. And three, more control. One, increased conversation. Most of what people tend to discuss when talking about colorism in social media are the destructive conversations. Many young black Americans, for example, post negative and stereotypical comments about people with dark skin. They brag about their prejudices and they promote activities that perpetuate division and competition. Because I want this particular site to be as free of that negativity as possible, I've decided not to do the typical screenshots or captures of some of those destructive social media posts. But if you're curious or feel like you need to see it to believe it, a simple Google or Twitter, Twitter search will get you there. But through social media, we've also had more constructive conversations about colorism, mainly to talk directly about stopping it, healing from it, acknowledging the detrimental effects, and affirming one another. This is what's beautiful about social media to me. People can reach out to one another in love, even to people they've never met. I want to encourage all of us to post, retweet, share, like, pin, more constructive conversations like this. Two, greater alliances. One of the most popular and divisive alliances prevalent on social media has been hashtag team dark skin and hashtag team light skin. That's right, people are self-segregating due to racist conditioning. However, what other more constructive tweets demonstrate is how social media makes it simple to form constructive alliances. It's so quick and easy to reach out to someone and receive feedback that's relatively instantaneous. There's potential for and already much foundation being laid for a global coalition against colorism, which I first spoke about in another post. This is the kind of alliance that could change the world for the better. It wouldn't be the kind of league that pits us against them in, battle, in a battle against humanity, quite the opposite. It would be a coalition of humanity working to dismantle the harmful ideology of so-called white or light supremacy. These constructive alliances also go a long way in letting young people know that they are not alone in their hurt and struggle, that there are others enduring the same thing, and that there are others who've overcome it, and that there are people willing to help them do the same. Three, more control. The mere fact that this site and others like it even exist, and the fact that people like you are reading or listening to this is a testament to the highly democratic and accessible nature of the internet. This benefits us as we work for change because we can seek out, create, and disseminate content that heals us and others. Part of healing the world from colorism is letting people of color know that just like we have control over how we design our profiles, who we follow, our friend, and what we post on our social media accounts, we also have control over our healing. 
We can be proactive in nurturing the best in ourselves. We have the power to undo any self-defeating patterns we may have. We are not helpless and hopeless in the face of a long legacy of racism around the world because we also have a long legacy of triumph. And social media is one new tool that can help us sculpt a better world if we use it correctly. Let's put out enough love and affirmation that we nullify the existence of colorism in social media.